This category is designed to teach students the critical importance of knowing the facts of one's case and presenting those facts as fairly and persuasively as possible. To judge this category, it will be helpful for you to have a good knowledge of the facts in the compromise. In addition, you may bring a copy of the compromise into the match to determine whether an oralist factual statement is fair and accurate. You should consider the following three points when evaluating an oralist's knowledge of the facts. The oralist should know the facts in the compromise. Knowing the facts is critical when arguing a case. Competitors are trained to know the facts in the compromise very well because they cannot apply a lot of facts that they do not know and they cannot persuasively present their case to you if they don't know the facts better than you do. Knowledge of the facts is indispensable in any legal practice and so we emphasize the importance of it in the Jessup. You may expect the oralist to know not only the substance of the facts, but in which paragraph of the compromise each fact is to be found. Here is a good example. Your Excellencies, in the beginning of 1778, the islands were still terra nullius, meaning that no state had sovereignty over them. Now, although Ridal had discovered the islands and had placed a flag and a carved rock claiming sovereignty on the islands, in the 18th century, as the island of Palmas case stated, discovery was not enough to create sovereignty over territory. What was required was effective occupation. Now, Your Excellencies, this court has looked into the establishment of settlements or the exercise of criminal jurisdiction as acts of administrative control that constitute effective occupation. These were lacking in 1777 with respect to Riddall's actions. Instead, the first state to establish effective occupation was Plumland through the vice royalty of Espatria when it established, operated, and maintained the fort and settlement of Salkeld since from 1778 to 1799 for a continuous period of 21 years. The oralist should fairly and accurately interpret the facts. The Jessup Compromis is actually much shorter than the Compromis that are submitted to the ICJ in real life. Nonetheless, in the Jessup competition, the only information we know about the dispute is from the facts that are set out in the Compromis. Oralists are allowed to make reasonable logic inferences from the facts, but should resist the temptation to read in, to read in facts that are not there, or make ill-founded conclusions or generalizations based on the available facts. Competitors should consistently present facts to the bench in a strategic yet fair manner. They should highlight the best facts in their favor while effectively dealing with and not ignoring unfavorable facts. The oralist should make compelling policy arguments. It is important to understand that larger context in which the case exists. If the court rules in the, in the advocate's favor, the advocate should be able to discuss the consequences of such a decision. Moreover, the oralist should persuade you that the benefits of a ruling in her favor outweigh any adverse consequences and highlight the negative consequences that would arise in the event the opponent's relief is granted.